Today, we proudly open a new chapter in our history as we inaugurate the Bangsam Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Today marks a history for us. We are starting a new kind of jihad. A jihad against poverty, against want, and against neglect. We have been guided in our armed struggle by the tenets of Islam. We will also be guided by the teachings of Islam in delivering the trust that was been given to us to run the Bank Samoro government through the brand of leadership Islam advocates, that is moral governance. As we enter the transition period, I ask everyone to work towards building lasting peace and inclusive progress that will benefit all Mindanaoans and the entire country as well. What is in transition now is uh, not just BTA. Both national government and the uh, the barn are actually in transition. To my dear Bangsamoro sisters and brothers, in the BTA, the power to chart the course of your region's future is now in your hands. Welcome to today's online forum, Reporting Mindanao. This is the second episode of the series, Bangsamoro in Transition. Before anything else, and before I forget, my name is Ami Kabusao, your host for this forum, and I'd like to acknowledge our production director, Rob Gumba, and our technical director, Yasa Campo. We would also like to welcome our participants from the media we have here with us, uh, Ariel Sebelino, uh, the, the Executive Director of the Philippine Press Institute. Good morning, Thank good you. morning. Thank you, Ariel. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, from Mindanao Times, uh, from the Philippine Daily Inquirer, and the Manila Bulletin Davao. We also uh, welcome uh, representatives from the academy mm -hmm. and civil society organizations who are now watching us live here uh, on Zoom and, of course, uh, on, on Facebook. So last October 30, we had... We had here with us three experts who presented the legal and political track of the midterm review conducted by the Mindanao People's Caucus. Now for our second session, the review team will report on uh, Bangsamoro transition to, to normalization. But before anything else, may we call on Ms. Carol Argilias, the editor-in-chief of the Mindanus, to give us the background and the raison d'etre of this online forum. The floor is yours, Ms. Carol. Good morning. Uh, maayong buntag sa atong tanan, gikan din hi sa Davao, Mindanao. Welcome back to Reporting Mindanao, an online forum initiated by Mindanus to discuss various issues concerning Mindanao and to provide journalists a venue to enhance their understanding and reporting of these issues. For the Bangsamoro in Transition series, which we launched last Friday, we invited the Mindanao People's Caucus, which conducted in August and September, a review of what has been done in the first half of the three-year transition period that by law will end on June 30, 2022. Members of the review team, Attorney Hanan, Attorney Marian Arnado, Attorney Melot, sorry, Melot Balisa Lisa, presented in our session one last Friday their findings and recommendations on the legal political track review. 
Session two this morning will be on the normalization crack. What has happened since September 7, 2019, when the second phase of the four-phase decommissioning process started? That day in Simuay, Sultan Kudarat, Maguindanao, in the presence of President Rodrigo Duterte, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front turned over to the international decommissioning body headed by Turkey 940 high-powered firearms, including 81 mm mortars, crew-mounted caliber 50 machine guns, and RPG-7 rocket launchers with 600 rounds of ammunition, which Presidential Peace Advisor Carlito Galvez, a former Armed Forces Chief of Staff, described as, quote, significant considering how deadly the weapon was for government tanks and personnel, close quote. A total of 1,060, 1060 combatants of the MILF's Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, or BIAF, were decommissioned that day, including 106 from the Bangsamoro Islamic Women Auxiliary Brigade. The second phase would have decommissioned a total of 12,000 combatants and several thousands of weapons. The first phase done in June 2015, they commissioned 145 combatants and 75 weapons, 55 high-powered and 20 crew-served weapons. How many combatants and weapons have been decommissioned since September 7, 2019? Have all 12,000 combatants been decommissioned? How many firearms have been decommissioned? In phases three and four, a total of 28,000 combatants are still to be decommissioned. And we only have 573 days, 573 days left to the end of the transition period on June 30, 2022. Normalization, however, is not just about decommissioning the MILF's weapons and combatants. It is much more than this. Last week, Attorney Marian Arnado emphasized that in this three-year transition period, it is not only the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao that is in transition, but the national government as well. Let us remember that in the past four decades, there have been three types of setup of the autonomous regions in Mindanao. The Regional Autonomous Government, Mr. Marcos, the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao that spanned five administrations from Aquino the mother to Aquino the son, and the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, which is different from the previous as it is a parliamentary setup under a highly centralized presidential system of government. We have invited members of the review team to share with us their findings and recommendations on the normalization track. Again, thank you for joining this forum. Welcome to Reporting Mindanao. Welcome to our second episode of the Bank Samoro in Transition series. And we hope you join us in the next episodes. Dagang uh, salamat. Thank you, Ka. Uh, we have some housekeeping checks before we move on. So all participants are uh, advice to please turn off their mics and cameras during the presentation of the speakers. And for the question and answer, participants may ask questions through the Zoom chat box, which is below the screen, or the comment section on Facebook. Please indicate your name and organization. Thank you. We would now like to introduce our presenters for today, who are both part of the midterm review of the Mangsamore in Transition by the Mindanao People's Caucus. We have Herbert Demos, who has a degree in sustainable uh, studies from Mindanao State University in General Santos City. He is a council member of the Mindanao People's Caucus and the regional coordinator for Soxer Gen of the Centro ng Mga Nagkakaisa at Progresibong Mangagawa Centro, a national labor organization. Our second presenter is Joselito Penpen Libres who is the president and CEO of Succeed Incorporated, a development consulting firm and a social enterprise involved in advocacy in the peace process and development projects in conflict affected areas in Muslim Mindanao. He is also a board member of the Mindanao People's Caucus and president 
of the Kilusang Pagbabago, both national and international, which is a broad people's movement for true change, supporting the Duterte administration. He was the previous undersecretary of the Office of Participatory Governance, Office of the Cabinet Secretary, Office of the President. So may we ask uh, the first presenter, please? Uh, maraming, maraming salamat for the introduction. Uh, Tuna sa lahat, uh, aming pinapabot ang isang mainit na pagbati sa kapayapaan. Assalamu alaikum at magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, this presentation of the report of the normalization track is part of the rapid midterm review on the Bangsamoro transition period initiated by Mindanao People's Caucus. The normalization track is not a standalone and independent track, but part of the whole package of agreements and interlock in the political and legal track, which was already presented earlier. We would like to acknowledge and uh, extend gratitude to the people that made this review on the normalization track uh, possible. But just to name a few, as there are so many to mistake Minister Mohagar Iqbal, the chair of Imayalet Peace Panel, um, and Minister of Education of uh, the Barn, Yusek Tisiano of OPAP, also chair of uh, GPH Panel, Mr. Ai Hernandez, chair of the JNC, uh, Minister Ed Guerra, co-chair of JNC and, other, and others from OPAP, and members of the various mechanisms and some of the decommissioned Combatants. Also, ang aming malaking pasasalamat to Minda News for organizing this uh, public presentation. The objectives of the review are as follows. Uh, one, to determine the milestones of what have been achieved so far in the implementation of the normalization program. Uh, number two, determine the enabling factors, Identif identify the gaps uh, and the constraining factors factors and challenges, and uh, submit recommendations. Uh, the flow presentation, uh, balik muna, uh, one, on first the introduction for the background, then milestone and milestones and enabling factors, gaps and constraints and challenges, and then the recommendations. So after four years of armed struggle for self-determination by the more Islamic Liberation Front, a political settle settlement was forged between them and the government of the Republic of the Philippines. The Framework Agreement of the Bangsamoro, or FAB, FAB, was signed on October 15, 2012 by the representatives of the Republic of the Philippines and Imayolep and Malaysia, the third party facilitator. The FAB has four annexes, namely power sharing, revenue generation and wealth sharing, transitional arrangements, and normalization. The FAB and the CAB led to the cessation of armed confrontations between the AFP, PNP, and Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, the arm wing of the Emile Left, and paved the way to the establishment of the new autonomous political entity, the Bangsamoro, to replace the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The annex on normalization is an integral part of the FAB that was signed by the GPH and Imayalep with the international facilitator on January 25, 2014. Uh, as defined, uh, normalization is a process whereby communities can achieve their desired quality of life which includes the pursuit of sustainable livelihood and political participation within a peaceful, deliberative society. So the main parts of the Annex on Normalization are uh, policing uh, transitional components, decommissioning, redeployment of the AFP, uh, clearing of an exploded uh, Explosives and landmines, disbandment of the private armed groups, socio-economic development program, transitional justice and reconciliation, resource mobilization, confidence building measures, and last 
the schedule or the matrix of the program. Uh, in mainly references, gather the items A to F of the annex uh, on normalization in the Bank Samaro are clustered under the heading of security aspect. And the other remaining uh, aspects are the socioeconomic development program, confidence building, and transitional justice and reconciliation aspect. Attached to the annex uh, on normalization, as stated in item K or the schedule, is a matrix on the program for normalization in the Bank Samoro, which outlines the phasing and sequencing of the different elements. This is one of the main references in the conduct of the midterm review. The program for normalization has four phases to complete the whole program. The signed document has no definite timeline as to when to accomplish its phase and when to end the program with the signing of an exit agreement. Instead, the moving forward of one phase to the next phase depends on the progress of the compliance of every specific agreement, including the completion of the main tasks or the parameters that describes each phase of the program. So yung phase one covers from the signing of the annex and normalization up to the completion of the verification and validation conducted by the IDB. Phase two, completion of the validation of the MILA forces up to the ratification of the Bank Samoro Basic Law or the Basic Law. Phase three, from the ratification of the Basic Law up to the establishment and operationalization of the police force for the Bank Samoro and phase four from the operationalization of the police force for the Bank Samoro up to two months prior to the signing of the exit agreement. Technically, the normalization program is now in its third phase based on the description as stated in the attached matrix. It is worth noting that the panels have committed for an exit agreement to be signed in time of the end of the transition period the BARM on June 2022. Uh, at this point, uh, I will call uh, my colleague Herbert Demos to uh, have the floor to present the milestones and enabling factors. Maraming salamat. We go now to the next speaker. So I will present you know, the milestones and uh, enabling factors uh, of the of the normalization. So actually, no, uh, we have uh, four four uh, aspect uh, of normalization. So right now, an uh, uh, security aspect. Uh, um, so you have uh, six uh, indicators. No, na masabi natin. No, ano na yung mga mga milestone. No? So first, on the uh, on the transition component of the security aspect, which are uh, the joint uh, normalization. Uh, uh, committee, no? uh, so actually, uh, GNC is tasked to undertake the uh, primary function no, of uh, coordinating the process of normalization. No? So next slide. Uh, uh, while the uh, Joint Peace and Security uh, Committee or GPST will be uh, under the GNC no? with the following uh, functions. No? So, uh, no. First is uh, coordinate with the two parties uh, uh, command structures on security arrangement and are relevant to its uh, uh, functions. Second, uh, develop policies and operational guidelines for the effective partnership of the GPSTs. And uh, uh, last, uh, coordinate the security arrangement for the uh, activities related to the implementation of the uh, FAB no, and its uh, analysis. So while the, the Joint Peace and Security Teams, no, or GPSTs, uh, shall be the, the operating unit, units uh, composed of contingents of the armed forces uh, of the Philippines, uh, the PNP in the MILF, no? uh, Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, or BIAP. No? Uh, these uh, mechanisms shall uh, work for the maintenance of uh, peace and order and the stability of, uh, of the areas uh, mutually identified by the GPH in the, in the MILF. Huh? So, yeah. 
so that the creation and uh, operationalization of the of the GNC, uh, PEC and uh, GPSDs are among the transitional components of the security aspect no, of the normalization program. So the the GNC and GPSD has uh, uh, had been organized very much active and functional in the whole process. No? So, so so far, no, so uh, on the joint peace and security uh, teams. So uh, there are already 225 uh, MIL. Uh, via uh, train no? and uh, so far 90, 90 uh, of them are deployed in six uh, GPS this no? which is composed of 15 MILF via in 15 from the PNP uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines no? uh, and they provided a uh, subsistence allowance of 5,000 no? uh, however the budget is available until uh, December 2020 no? uh, and uh, the construction of uh, stations already started. No? Um, <clears throat> pick up and motorcycles are already put on over, no? which are uh, supported by the government of uh, Japan. No? So usually, no, ang trabaho talaga ng GPST no? uh, shall work for the maintenance of peace and security in the in the area. No? Example, in the uh, conflict uh, resolution. So. Next on the decommissioning, uh, so as of it as of this uh, uh, date, so there were twelve thousand one hundred forty-five no decommissions out of a uh, forty thousand um uh, via uh, combatant no and uh, the international decommissioning body was already uh, established no composed of a uh, international uh, representatives no from GPH and uh, MILF, no? uh, which are chaired by Turkey, while uh, the vice chairs from uh, are represented by Norway. No? Then uh, top three decommission uh, combatants are uh, equivalent to 64% no, of the 12,145 are coming from Maguindanao, no? while 31% uh, 31 31 no? are coming from Lanao del Sur, no? while uh, 22% from North Cotabato and uh, uh, yeah, then uh, also included no, the, the weapons and the ammunition and bullets. No? Then, uh, so yung mga barrel ngayon, uh, kasama yung mga bala, uh, nasa secured armed storage area, no? was set up in Camp Abu Bakar and secured by a team of uh, GPST. No? So, on uh, policy, no? so guidelines on recruitment and entry of MILF and MILF from the BARM into the uh, Police Regional Office of BARM, uh, drafted by Napolcom and uh, PNP will soon be approved by, uh, uh, approved by the ILG. And while the copy of the guidelines was uh, furnished to the email for review and uh, feedback. So on the uh, dismantlement of uh, private armies groups, no? uh, so the annex, the annex on normalization uh, provides the creation of the national task force on the dismantling of private armies, uh, uh, private armed groups, no? that is in charge of the policy, the planning, and implementation. So right now, so the OPAP in DILG is preparing to convene no? the first uh, meeting of the. In the uh, BPAGs that will done, no? uh, I don't know, kung natuloy nung uh, October, so yun yung uh, target. While uh, uh, implementing rules and regulation was already approved by the Executive Secretary. And uh, initial listing of the private armed groups no, uh, was uh, submitted. No? And uh, small arm uh, and light weapons, uh, the Joint Normalization uh, Committee Secretariat is coordinating with the DILG to post for the uh, commencement of this program. So on the issue of uh, redeployment of uh, armed forces in the Philippines, so it will commence as soon as the assessment and recommendations are uh, completely are complete and finalized by the Joint Normalization Committee in the security sector. Um, so also uh, interlinked to the deployment of GPST. No? So uh, EAP will be redeployed if uh, GPST can be deployed in areas to ensure the peace and order. 
Uh, on the clearing of uh, unexploded uh, explosives and landmines. So, um, there were already uh, 239 uh, spots no? uh, being identified. No? So, nakita na rin yung uh, one location. Then, uh, uh, nakleared ng 91. No? Uh, uncleared 131 excluding in Marawi, uh, only, uh, mainly uh, 40 mm. No? And uh, uh, 595 victims, no, ang uh, identified. No? So actually, no, uh, the Joint Task Force on uh, on Mines uh, Detection and Clearance was organized, composed of two uh, GPX, uh, two from EMAIL and one from from uh, PCBL, no? and one from uh, FSD and one from IMT. No? So on the Socioeconomic aspect naman, so uh, actually the task force on um, the commission combatants and its uh, community was established and uh, very functional. No? Uh, and all the 12,145 the commission combatants uh, received 100,000 um, cash assistance or a total of uh, 1.2 billion uh, pesos. No? So the first uh, 145 uh, the Commission combatants also undergone integrated enterprise uh, skills training related to agriculture. No? Um, then uh, about 4,859 the Commission combatants received an additional amount of uh, 29.154 million uh, or an equivalent of average of 6,000 per combatant no? from Department of Labor through to PAD program. On the uh, uh, Confidence building measures. Uh, so in the camp transformation, so it covers uh, six major MILF uh, camps, namely Camp uh, uh, Abu Bakar, Camp Rajamuda, Camp uh, Busra, uh, Badri Umar, and Bilal. No? So the GTFCT is tasked to formulate with the assistance of uh, Bangsamoro Development uh, Authority no? uh, and, and implement the Camp transformation program. No? Uh, usually, the confidence building uh, measures has two main parts: no, camp transformation and amnesty and pardon. No? Um, on, the, on the camp transformation, so camp development plans uh, were for, uh, formulated for the six identified uh, min, min camp, no, to be submitted to the panels for uh, approval. No? While uh, various stakeholders in camp sites were involved in the planning process, no? and um, for 2020, uh, Camp Bilal was allocated 70 million, no? and another uh, 60 million in other camps for uh, infrastructure uh, program. So, in the uh, confidence building measures, no? um, so actually, on, on again on amnesty and pardon, so. So issuance of safe uh, conduct passes to some 14 personalities with uh, case in court. No? So yun yung uh, isa sa uh, uh, situation sa ngayon. So, uh, however, no, working out for the proclamation of amnesty, uh, Department of Justice already submitted a, a proposal of amnesty program, including uh, other peace uh, tables no? uh, to the executive secretary, but waiting for the Office of the President and the Congress to act on, on it. No? A copy was also furnished and to the MIL uh, for comment. No? Last, no, on the transitional justice, no, the, uh, tra the transitional justice and reconciliation uh, committee was established and uh, submitted its report no, in uh, February 2016 containing 90 recommendations. No? Uh, so, uh, House Bill number 5669 and uh, 4003 are uh, required. No? Uh, on the creation of transitional justice and reconciliation board for the Bangsamoro, no? uh, for the Bangsamoro is still for uh, uh, for deliberation. Uh, at the level of the panel, the technical working group was created and uh, drafted a roadmap. No? So the ICC in, in subcluster on a TGR uh, mapping of agency program. No? Uh, Twenty-two agencies are active. No? So actually. Um, the TRGC established, uh, so conducted and submitted a study no, addressing of historical uh, injustice, no, legitimate grievances, human rights violation, no, uh, Bangsamoro education and history. No. 
marginalization through land uh, disposition. So, so the signing of a TUR or for technical working group, no? TGR on August 2019. So the the formulation of TGR roadmap to respond to the 90 recommendations of the TRGC to be presented no? again uh, on April, last October 2009. So, on the, <clears throat> in, 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 enabling uh, factors, no? uh, uh, First, no, there is a relative peace in the barn no, due to cessation of uh, armed confrontations between the GPH and MIL um, BF. No. Second, no, the relative peace has greatly contributed in providing favorable environment for the Moro families and uh, communities to focus more on their livelihood and uh, be more productive. No. And uh, new businesses are uh, sprouting in many places, and economic activities are uh, gaining momentum. So, so the, the program is now the second phase of uh, implementation. No? So, it's been so many na ang nakakatulog sa kanila ng mahimbing, no? uh, kasama na, na nila palagi yung kanilang pamilya, at hindi na palagi to matakbo sa, sa bundok, no? at uh, makapaghanap buhay na rin sila ng maayos. So there is a sincerity no, uh, and strong partnership between the uh, government of the Philippines and uh, MILF in the implementation of the uh, compre uh, comprehensive uh, agreement on Bangsamoro. No? Example on the nor uh, normalization program. No? Uh, the, basically the normalization structure and the various mechanisms are in place no? and a functional uh, covering the di different aspects and items of the normalization, uh, including uh, the actual conduct of all activities are based on the principle of joint implementation. Uh, then uh, collaboration uh, and uh, harmonious relationships between the forces, PNP and MILB B up in uh, various mechanisms uh, and at the Field level are strongly uh, filled and provide more con conducive working environment. So come in go, no? Uh, ayong uh, coming out in um, uh, email and then um, the part of the armed forces and the PNP. Uh, third, no? Uh, so, <clears throat> kita naman natin yung commitment and actual support no, of the other countries and, and donors. Um, agencies to various aspects of the normalization program. No? So, kita naman natin, uh, example, no, the MTA World Bank, Government of Japan, so, uh, nag-commit actually sila, no, the, the Peace and Development Bank, no? so, meron 25 million euros yan na commitment, no? and support to Bangsamoro Transition um, or Subatra, no? then the Turkish Government, British Embassy, no? uh, the Organization of Islamic Conference, the um, JICA, no? the UN, uh, UN uh, PA, the UNDP, no? and the uh, UN Peace Building Fund, and uh, as well as the UN Women's Support to National Action. No? So, I mean, maraming mga nag-commit na no? para sa peace and development sa, sa BARM. So, ito yung mga uh, positive no? na, uh, uh, component no? ng uh, part ng normalization to ensure the sustainability of Peace and development in barn area. No? So lastly, no, so actually President Duterte signed an executive order on uh, number 79, no, uh, the creation of inter-cabinet cluster mechanism on a uh, normalization, no? uh, should favorable response, then active role and participation of 22 government uh, agencies supporting the normalization program. No? For example, the Department of Labor, that is the DPI, and the uh, National uh, irrigation administration and uh, among others so actually that's the the, the uh, milestone in enabling factors and lastly of course no the publication of mindanao peace digest and a series of webinars to inform the public on the latest updates on the political legal and normalization uh, normalization tracks no uh, of the um in barn no? so so, so far, no? so that's the, the milestone and enabling factors no? uh, of the normalization aspect. So I think me I call on uh, 
colleague uh, Pinpin for the uh, presentation of the gaps, constraints, and the challenges of the normalization. So thank you. Okay, uh, to ko, no? uh, the okay. second part uh, uh, is on gaps, constraints, and challenges. Uh, this part uh, is uh, divided into two subparts. No? Uh, delivery of specific agreements uh, based on the program uh, on normalization and the other uh, constraints and challenges. So those uh, specific uh, agreements, hati hindi natin to into four major parts. Uh, una yung security. And then uh, sa security aspect, uh, yung transitional components. Uh, dito sa transitional components, yung JPST ay merong target na 6,000 JPST personnel. 3,000 of which uh, will come from BILF, BIAP, and the other 3,000 from the GPH. Uh, that will be deployed in 200 stations with uh, 30 personnel each per JPST. Uh, so far sa ngayon, uh, kailangan pang i-deploy uh, yung remaining 135 na trained na BILF, BILF, BILF. Yung 90 kasi are already uh, deployed uh, in 6 JPSTs. So yung natirang trained na pero hindi pa na-deploy 135. But uh, siyempre based on the target of 6,000, meron pang 2,775 MILF that need, that need to be trained to complete the 3,000. Tapos, uh, uh, mayroon silang subsistence allowance for 5,000, but uh, they said that uh, kung pwede sanang madagdagan ito dahil uh, maliit. Uh, yung mga stations ng mga deployed GPST ay malalayo sa mga uh, kabahayan nila. Sa decommissioning, uh, natapos na yung 12,000 for the second phase and then meron pang 28,000 combatants still to be decommissioned in the third and fourth uh, phases. So pareho silang 14,000, 40,000 each uh, phase. Uh, submission of list of combatants and weapons for the third phase was supposed to be submitted on April 2020. Uh, then uh, later moved to September 2020. Uh, unfortunately, hanggang ngayon ay hindi pa nasasubmit yung uh, listahan for the third phase. Policing. Uh, the policing uh, aspect or item uh, on the program, uh, on the phase two provision, ang sinasabi doon, preparatory work for the policing in the Mang Samoro. Ano ang, uh, sa ngayon, uh, kailangan dito, panels need to agree on the draft guidelines made by the PNP and NAPOLCOM. Ang isang uh, um, malaking usapin dito ay yung numbers. Uh, ilan ba ang kayang i-recruit uh, uh, para sa PNP Pro BARM or PNP uh, Police Regional Office uh, BARM coming from the MILF and MNLF. So, uh, as we could note, uh, habang mayroong bagamat mayroong provision for policing doon sa annex on normalization, the BOL does not allow the establishment of the Bangsamoro Police. Instead, uh, they uh, allowed the entry of MILF and MNLF to the uh, PNP. Uh, Dismantment of the PAGs, private armed groups and other armed groups, uh, phase 1 provision, uh, sinasabi rito establishment of a national task force and then comprehensive security assessment and the GPSC and GPSTs work on the disbandment of the PAGs and other armed groups and strengthening of dispute settlement mechanism. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, kailangan pang i-launch. Uh, we don't know if uh, the scheduled launching on uh, last month, October, ay natuloy yun. Uh, then, of course, uh, nakita natin kanina that JPSTs are still to be trained and uh, deployed. Uh, in fact, meron na na-train pero hindi pa deployed. No? 
Um, then, uh, then the phase two provisions, uh, meron ng action supposed to be for the PAGs, pero dahil nga uh, wala pa yung task force and then uh, hindi pa deployed ang lahat ng mga uh, uh, GPST, so bitin pa rin yung usapin na yan. Uh, redeployment of the AAP. Uh, sa phase two, ang sinasabi, identification of priorities of redeployment, start of deactivation of civilian armed auxiliaries special civilian armed auxiliaries and then start the redeployment plans. So sa ngayon, wala pang aksyon. Uh, hindi pa nakapag-assess. So, wala pang deployment and then related din dyan ay yung training and deployment of JPSTs because uh, the JPSTs will be responsible in uh, securing or ensuring the peace and order situation in specific areas where AFP contingents are redeployed. On uh, unexploded explosive and landmines, there is the need to strengthen collaboration and coordination mechanisms to reduce or shorten or hasten response time in actual clearing. So dahil uh, mabagal yung coordination, kaya uh, mabagal din ang response time. Uh, sometimes uh, mayroong mga identified uh, explosives uh, bago makarating yung team to actually uh, detonate or clear the area, uh, contaminated na yung site or di kaya wala na yung uh, explosives. And then there's also need for timely and adequate support for the victims. Itong joint task force on uh, uh, clearing of uh, explosives ay isang uh, independent initiative that directly under the structure of JNC. So, tinitignan kung paano pa magiging effective and uh, efficient uh, itong task force uh, for them to sustain the initiative beyond the program. And the socio-economic aspect, ito yung uh, sinasabi sa phase two that uh, uh, conduct additional needs and skills assessment of email forces and communities and then capacity building for MILF forces and socioeconomic development for program uh, for MILF forces and conflict affected areas. So phase one, na meron pa palang hindi natapos, establishment of Bangsamoro Normalization Trust Fund. Itong trust fund ay uh, isang uh, facility or mechanism that uh, could uh, raise uh, funds from other sources apart from the support coming from the government. Uh, unfortunately, hindi pa established ito. What is needed here is the uh, special presidential authority uh, na sinasabi naman to be signed uh, anytime. For the other economic packages of the 12,145 decommissioned combatants at 900,000 pesos each uh, is equivalent to 10.931 billion. Uh, the available budget for 2020 is pegged at 412 million. So merong malaking deficit ito na 10.5 billion pesos. Kasi for the whole package, uh, it is computed at uh, 1 million. Ngayon, binigyan ng 100,000 pesos cash assistance yung uh, each uh, decommissioned combatant. So meron pang 900,000 na natitira. That will be in the form of other packages. Yung sinasabi kanina ng social protection, uh, socio-economic livelihood, infrastructure, and etc. So for the third phase, uh, the amount needed for the socio-economic uh, aspect is equivalent to 14 billion. Uh, that would mean 14,000 times 1 million each. Uh, yung 1.4 billion for cash assistance are already included in the is already included in the 2021 budget. And the 12.6 billion for other packages, excluding admin cost, I still to be allocated. So obviously, there is a lack of resources. At the same time, there is so much expectation from the decommissioned combatants and their families. Due uh, to confidence building measures, uh, phase two provisions, sinasabi, Disposition of previously acknowledged MIL camps. Uh, this means implementation of programs and measures to implement 
previously acknowledged in my life comes into peaceful and productive communities. And then the other part of the confidence building measures, amnesty and pardon. Issue once a proclamation of amnesty by the president, concurrence by, the co by Congress, and processing of amnesty and pardon papers and disposition of cases covered. Uh, sa ngayon, ang inabot ay yung plans for camp transformation ay kailangan pang finalize and approved by the panels. And then uh, yung planning frame in the camp transformation plan ay umaabot ng hanggang 2026 uh, to 2027, starting 2021. So uh, mag-i-extend ito, no? Uh, if ever there will be a signed agreement exit agreement on 2022, um, it will go beyond uh, that uh, time frame, the implementation of the uh, camp transformation plans. An issue was raised on the coordination of projects, access from the donors directly implemented, not passing through agreed protocols. So mayroong mga incidents na yung project uh, implementation ay dumedred, so na uh, binabypass yung GNC structure. Uh, Nare-raise na ito at uh, uh, hopefully ma-address na rin nila. Uh, sa, ngayon, amnesty proposal is still pending at the office of the president. Transitional justice and reconciliation. Uh, roadmap on transitional justice and reconciliation uh, formulated by the technical working group needs approval of the panels. Mayroon na yan but uh, kailan pa aprobahan. Uh, some activities uh, were stalled pending actions the leg legislation of the tech, uh, Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Board na pending din sa uh, Kongreso. The other part, uh, itong gaps, constraints, and challenges ay itong uh, iba pang mga constraining factors and challenges. Number one, the operationalization, operationalization of the Bank of Polo Police as indicator in advancing to phase three of the normalization process. Uh, sa ngayon, the normalization program is in phase uh, three, with BOL already ratified uh, as an indicator of the program on normalization. Uh, this happened in spite of the backlogs in the other items in phase one. The decommissioning of 30%, equivalent to 12,000 MILA forces, a major milestone phase two has proceed, proceeded and uh, been completed. The phase three was set to cover, is set to cover the period from ratification of the bicycle law to the establishment of the and operationalization of the Bank Samaro Police. Obviously, this phase is confronted with complications as the BOL disallows the establishment of Bank Samaro Police. Nonetheless, it provides the entry of the recruits from MILF and MNLF to the program. So may malaking uh, usapin dito na kailangan uh, i-resolve, um, i-settle ng both panels uh, dahil dito sa uh, parameters or indicators sa uh, phase 3 na establishment and, bank, and operationalization of the banks of our police. Uh, number two, uh, itong pandemic of COVID-19 na talaga namang nagkahamper sa momentum and made an apparent setback in the normalization program. So, alam naman natin uh, uh, napakaraming lahat ay apektado dito. Uh, lahat ng mga activities, programan ng gobyerno and uh, even at the household level ay apektado. So, hindi spared ang normalization program at uh, talagang mar maraming activities ang uh, hindi pa nagaganap at uh, nakakancel dahil sa pandemic na ito. Uh, number, uh, in next point, uh, evident lack of funds. No? Malinaw na further aggravated by the pandemic economic recession obstruct the delivery of desired peace dividends and other agreements. Next uh, point, uh, high poverty incidents, uh, frustrations due to long overdue, if not failure, of the Marawi reconstruction, the anti barn position of some LGUs and groups, legal drugs trade, kidnapping and banditry and violent extremism pose real threats to the fragile peace accord. So, 
may ilang uh, datos dito yung poverty incidence sa uh, arm uh, remains extremely high and even increased from 2015 to 2018 among families from 48% to 53% uh, and then among population from 53% to 61%. Uh, while the national poverty incidence among Filipino families ay nasa 12% lang. So this is not new. Uh, Burma has always been the, the poorest region for some time, for several decades already. And uh, hanggang ngayon ay uh, meron pa rin malaking problema sa kahirapan sa barn. Number five, uh, concerns on the role of BARM, uh, intergovernmental relations and uh, coordination. Uh, the pressure for immediate and adequate delivery for such specific set of dividends, uh, lalo na dito sa usapin ng socioeconomic packages are both directed towards the national government and MILF, now in the leadership of the BARM. Uh, the decommissioned combatants and other members of MILF had expressed their sentiments in the matter through their leaders at the ground, many of which are also in the Barn Parliament and other branches of government and expect them to do something about it. Uh, meron ding uh, concerns raised in the role of Barn in the implementation of the normalization program. The practice of long downloading project funds via the national agencies through the through the uh, arm due to issues of unliquidated funds continues even with the new government of the barn. So, may malaking tanong dan dyan, bakit dinadaan din pa sa ibang mga agencies na meron namang barn. Uh, though itong issue na to ay uh, already uh, raised uh, in uh, the level of the panel. Uh, there are are also some lapses on coordination. Uh, of course, dito, una, yung malala natin the tragic incident of the Mama Sapano massacre uh, that happened exactly a year after the signing of the Annex on Normalization. So, may malaking issue dun sa coordination. Meron ding uh, issue sa pagpapatupad ng mga uh, projects uh, that uh, were implemented directly uh, by uh, OPAP uh, without passing the Joint Normalization Committee mechanisms. Meron ding issue on confiscation of firearms during uncoordinated operations. Uh, nasabit na rin yung complaints and uh, hopefully uh, maayos na rin nila. So those uh, were some of the issues related to uh, coordination. Uh, number six, uh, one uh, observation uh, is the diminishing multi-stakeholdership and CSO accompaniment in the normalization process. The CSO's uh, role and participation in the normalization program uh, is not as active and dynamic as it was before prior to the signing of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. This process with the GRP and Emanuele has, long, has, has a long history of strong uh, CSO component. CSOs can significantly contribute in many aspects of the normalization program. Uh, one attributory factor na nakita rito ay yung mga key leaders of the CS CSOs are already uh, now in the government. Uh, mainly the BARM at meron din ilan na nasa national government. Uh, mayroong observation din na uh, yung uh, pangangailangan for a more synchronized and cohesive role and participation of LGUs and the private sector in the program. So nakita natin uh, hindi rin ganun ka uh, nagsasalubong yung ang LGU uh, at saka yung private sector doon sa programa ng normalization. Uh, nakita rin uh, there is lack of uh, platform or mechanisms for this uh, purpose. Next, please. So given the current realities, which created further delay and limited delivery of agreements, when will the next phase or phase of decommissioning and the whole program normalization are expected to happen? Can an exit agreement be assigned in 2022 in time with the end of the transition period? 
So, yun yung isang uh, malaking katangungan na kailangan uh, tatanungin. So, yun yung mga gaps, uh, constraints, and challenges. And then the next part will be our uh, recommendations. So, meron kaming uh, seven major recommendations. Uh, number one, uh, for the GPH and MILF and uh, the Joint Normalization Committee to conduct in-depth uh, review on the normalization program implementation and agree on touching up or fast tracking of deliverables, possible recalibration, and defining the various minimum that can be considered substantive to proceed to the next phases of the commissioning and the normalization process. And hopefully, uh, realize the signing of the exit agreement by 2022. The panels have to agree either to stick to the original description that is operationalization of the Bank Samoro Police, or to make amendments and redefine the scope and indicator to advance to phase three. Whatever the case may be, it shall define the barest minimum considered as substantive, with due emphasis on the socioeconomic packages that the commission combatants, the families and communities are expecting so much. In the exigency of time, it is advisable and helpful to set new timelines as to when to accomplish what agree agreements to cut up in the delivery of agreements and hopefully sign the exit agreement by 2022 or beyond. Recommendation number two, in spite of the pandemic and budgetary constraints, fast track the delivery of agreements and further enhance the, the performance of the normalization program and uh, Pro normalization program implementation. On the security aspect, ito mga very specific nito. No? Transitional component, uh, deployment, the remaining training, the mile up via personnel, program and training, the, uh, and deployment of the remaining 2,775 targeted JPSTs. Uh, on the disbandment of PAGs, uh, organize the National Task Force and launch a forceful campaign. Uh, this can significantly contribute in neutralizing the uh, private armed groups, control the proliferation of illegal firearms, and deter violent incidents. Still on the security aspect, redeployment of AAP, conduct a joint assessment of situation, uh, and then the actual deployment uh, of the GPSTs to assume responsibility of the redeployed AAP. On policing, Finalize the and agree on the guidelines. We start the process of uh, recommendation. On the socioeconomic aspect, pursue the signing of the needed special presidential authority to operationalize the BNTF. But itong uh, item na to ay deliverable pa ng phase one. Uh, ensure the follow through uh, or re engagement. Uh, with the decommissioned combatants, monitor their status, uh, impact of interventions, define and operationalize follow-up interventions. Maximize and prioritize available 400, the available 412 million approved budget for the year 2020 to partly deliver the committed socio-economic packages of the decommissioned com combatants. Merong popular request dito uh, on housing. Sir, Confidence building measures, uh, come transformation, review and finalize and approve the uh, formulated plans, generate funds for its immediate implementation. implementation. Uh, we thought that uh, maybe it would be uh, better to tap technical experts, uh, including implementers in addition to planners, consider the role and direct participation of different development players and stakeholders, uh, including uh, cooperatives with track record, uh, service providers, industry and value chain experts, engagement with the private sector, and look into the role of Sharia and Islamic financing, to also look into integration of uh, various technologies, no? uh, the crops and animal subsystems, agroforestry, uh, production for food sustenance, and for the need of export and industrial uses. Define the area of synergy and comes transformation and development with existing donors to maximize available funding portfolio. 
because there are there are some uh, agencies uh, that have available funds uh, for camp transformation. So what is needed is to really look into the uh, synchronicity uh, to maximize uh, their uh, available resources. Pursue the commitment of other donor agencies uh, and countries for capital investments and for possible market of locally produced agri fishery products from the six main camps and other areas in the barn. Still in camp transformation, ensuring the link of camp uh, local economy to the meso, or regional, and the macro economy uh, through various strategic industries and value chains in order to build the foundation for uh, sustainability of the economic development interventions in identified uh, camps. On amnesty and pardon, also the action of the office of the action of office of the president on the amnesty program. If, if this takes uh, too long, prioritize the amnesty program for the MNLF and set a clear timeline. Because what is uh, in the amnesty program now at the OP is for all the peace panels. On transitional justice and reconciliation, finalize and approve the roadmap on transitional justice and reconciliation prepared by the technical working group and implement specific recommendations. Follow through on the initial plans of the inter-cabinet cabinet cluster mechanism for normalization, subcluster on the transitional justice and reconciliation. For soon the passing of law for the creation of justice and reconciliation body for the Bank Samoro that is now uh, pending at uh, Congress. Resource mobilization, uh, allocate adequate funding from public funds and vigorously raise funding from other sources for other socioeconomic packages and come uh, transformation. So sa public funds, uh, magandang uh, ensure yung allocation in 2022 GAA. Uh, and then also to secure from and program funds from the Office of the President. Encourage other agencies to request additional budget for normalization similar to the budget of the Dole and Tesla uh, done uh, for 2021. Resource mobilization, uh, a possible squeeze some existing regular programs of various agencies for the normalization program. Uh, mga scholarships, atibapang project related to health, uh, agriculture, etc. Maganda rin na may release na yung social development fund, fund na uh, computed at 5 billion a year uh, in a span of 10 years. It could help a lot in uh, filling up some gaps. Tap uh, and maximize local and inter international donors. So kailangan mapabilis sana yung issuance ng SPA for uh, Bang Samoro National Normalization Transform. Isa rin nakikita namin, uh, for BAM to exercise its power to solicit and receive grants and donations pursuant to letter Z, uh, Section 2, Article 5, Powers of Government, Section 9, Article 9, Basic Rights and Social Justice, letter H, Section 6 and Section, uh, 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 and section 26, Article 12, Fiscal Autonomy of the BUL. So, meron namang mga powers yung, yung BAM uh, to solicit and receive grants, so magandang ma, ma maximize ito for them to raise more funding. Prioritize and maximize available funding to address various needs for socioeconomic uh, needs, uh, camp transformation and development, and then support for the JPST and other activities. To devise an effective, uh, continuous, parallel, but coordinated communications plan. The strategies to manage expectations of the decommissioned combatants, their families, communities, and other stakeholders, and other concerns. So this may be in the form of uh, updating in various aspects of the program uh, implementation, whether in uh, sharing success stories and livelihood and other socioeconomic undertakings, encouraging them uh, in participatory governance, empowerment, and etc. So, yan yung isang nakita natin na isang strategic communications uh, 
plan and strategies. Number five, for the CSOs, uh, including NGOs, people's cooperatives, mga academe and other civic organizations to re-engineer and re-strategize the role to fill in some gaps and help hasten the implementation of the normalization program. Uh, they could be involved in lobby and advocacy in the passage of laws and executive orders, including assurance for budget for the program. Actively involved in the implementation of projects such as capacity building, livelihood, community development, and uh, etc. They could also uh, serve uh, as a sounding board for the implementation of the program. Uh, number six, establish a multi-stakeholder coordinative and partnership mechanism to encourage active participation of various st stakeholders in the program implementation, the principle of whole of the nation approach. The BARM, at the BARM level, uh, it can mirror the executive order 79 issued by President Duterte that paved the way for the creation of inter cabinet cluster mechanism on normalization. Or it may create another platform to expand and include the civil society organizations, the NGOs, the people's cooperatives, LGUs, private sector, the academe, the religious sector, and etc. Uh, this could be done through a law in the Barn Parliament or maybe uh, executive order for the chief minister, whichever is deemed appropriate. And the uh, last recommendation to provide the principles. Uh, President Duterte and Chief Minister Ibrahim uh, Rad, uh, with the objective assessment of the situation for them to decide on fast tracking of activities, ensuring allocation of adequate funding for the program, possible recalibration, and on the projection of the signing of the exit agreement. Uh, those are our, our report, those are our recommendations. At uh, maraming salamat, sukran, bigang salamat, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Herbert Damos and Sir Ken Pen. Uh, we now go to our question and answer. We have here uh, questions coming. The first question would be from uh, uh, Carmen Menmen, that my tan of the Nonviolent Peace Force. Uh, but this is a clarification. Uh, just a clarification. Uh, is the normalization process uh, the normalization process is now on phase three and the next question we can just proceed now is the budget for camp uh, for camp transformation in the barn already here already available or with opap and is jpst jpst has 200 stations were these identified already was there a set of criteria followed in the selection of these areas or stations? Anybody can answer. Oh, okay, I uh, I will answer. No? The first question uh, is on what phase uh, are we now? Based on the annex on normalization with the, uh, the matrix on the normalization program, the program is now in phase three. Uh, the phase three is described or covered from the ratification of the basic law up to the establishment of the establishment and operationalization of the Bangsamoro police. So, tapos na yung ratification ng basic law, uh, papunta na sana dun sa establishment and operationalization of the bank Samoro Police. Nasa phase 3 na tayo ngayon. The second question is the budget for camp transformation. Uh, actually, on the part of the government, uh, wala pang budget itong camp transformation. Uh, what we have uh, known, uh, the budget allocated for this year is only for the socio-economic packages. Walang specific budget for camp transformation. Uh, and uh, that budget only amounts to 412 million. So for the socio-economic, uh, meron pang deficit ng mga 10 billion plus. So for 
2021 ay wala ring pang malinaw na allocation for socioeconomic income transformation budget uh, sa susunod na taon. On the JPST uh, deployment, yes, the target is 200 uh, uh, JPST stations. So far sa ngayon, ang deployed ay meron lang anim na mga teams. Uh, meron pang balance na 196 uh, GPSTs to be deployed. Uh, yes, uh, the deployment of the GPSTs would depend on the assessment of the uh, the joint assessment of the MILF, uh, AFP, the security sector, through the mechanisms, joint uh, normalization committee, uh, para identify yung mga specific sites na kung saan i deploy yung mga JPSTs. Uh, that is, of course, uh, uh, in consideration to the existing AFP uh, personnel deployed in specific areas. So, pag i-redeploy yung AFP, yung GPSTs would assume. So, depende rin yan sa assessment ng uh, MILF at uh, uh, AFP uh, GPH. Yun po ang kasagutan. Maraming salamat po. Okay. So we go on to the next question from Julie Alipala of Philippine Daily Inquirer. Um, this is about the PAGs. What is the character of the group? Uh, where are they now? Who manages them? How many are still existing? Uh, and which area or provinces are they now? Um, uh, how are their thoughts about uh, your thoughts about dismantling? Uh, if indeed my nag reach out to them where they get their weapons or who provides them with weapons um iyong uh, pugs uh, wala wala we don't have the specific uh, information on how many uh, uh where they are but uh, the joint normalization committee or the emlf already have initial list submitted to the JNC. So, meron na silang sinabit na mga data nito uh, covering in almost all of the provinces uh, in the barn. Unfortunately, may sinasabi silang uh, merong mga private arm groups yung mga LGUs. Uh, hindi pa nila sinasabi kung sino-sino mga LGUs. Uh, merong mga sinabi silang uh, part-time and uh, full-time na mga armed groups. Uh, part-time dahil some of which are uh, mga members din ng MILFBF, ng mga kamag-anak ng mga LGUs. Uh, meron ding sinasabi silang mga uh, nawala na sa kanilang roster na mga nawala na sa kanilang roster ng MILFBF na mga uh, nasa uh, armed groups or private armed groups ng mga iba't ibang mga grupo. Yeah. Meron din mga full-time na mga armed groups na sinasuportahan yung mga grupo-grupo uh, yeah. kasama yung mga LGUs at iba pa. So, sa ngayon, uh, yeah. as we reported earlier, wala pang mali na, wala pang launching. Uh, actually, uh, to uh, dismantle these fags. Uh, itatayo pa yung task force that will be tasked to do the uh, dismantling at uh, kailangan pang i-assess mabuti yung sinabit na list ng Imaya Lepbia for the existing private armed groups in different uh, areas in the barn. Yan po. Um, okay, may I just, while waiting for Ami, may I just ask my question muna, sir? Sis Carol po. Uy, magandang may buntag. Yes, oh. Uh, clarify lang po, this is kind of long but I will, but it really has to be asked, no? The commissioning has four phases, di ba? But the phasing has not been followed. Based yes, on the annex on normalization, we are supposedly on phase three already yes, because the Bangsamoro law has been ratified. But yes, last year's decommissioning was still at phase two level. 30% of the 40,000 combatants and 30% of the 
of the 7,000 weapons were decommissioned. Yes. Phase three is supposed to be from the ratification of the basic law up to the establishment of the uh, and operation ration, operationalization <laughs> of the police force of the Bank tomorrow. 35% combatants and weapons, right? The commission. Yes. Yes. But the Bank Samoro law that Congress passed in 2018 deleted the provision on Bank Samoro police force. Your review yes. says in its stead, there is a police regional offices, office in the BARM or pro-BARM which allows members of the MILF and MNLF to join the police. How will the parties now reckon end of phase three so they can move forward to phase four? When MNLF and MILF combatants are integrated into the police, how many will be integrated? Um, uh, actually, uh, we, uh, that question uh, is also a question. And uh, that's why uh, we recommended that uh, the panels should uh, uh, sit down and resolve among themselves on how to settle on this matter. Because uh, the parameters for phase three, I, from ratification of the basic law, hanggang doon sa establishment and operationalization of the Bangsa for Moro Police. So may malaking uh, komplikasyon dito ngayon. Uh, kasi nga the BOL does not allow the establishment of the Bangsa Moro Police. Instead, uh, recruitment uh, allows the entry of uh, the MALF and MNLF to the uh, PNP. So, nagiging malaking usapin ito na kailangan nilang pag-usapan. Kasi, uh, totoong nag-decommission na for the second phase, yung 30%, but it cannot proceed. Uh, personally, tingin ko, mahirap na didiretso sila sa pag-complete ng decommissioning for the third phase dahil nga uh, dito sa issue na to ng uh, Bangsamoro Feliz. Uh, sa ngayon, mayroon ng draft yung recruitment, uh, draft guidelines, yung recruitment ng MILF at MNLF sa PNP. Uh, Pag-usapan din nila doon kung uh, ilan ba talaga ang pwedeng, uh, pwedeng ma-recruit. Uh, and then yung criteria for recruitment. So, Iyan yung mga uh, issues, uh, mga contentious issues na for the panels really to uh, sit down and resolve among themselves kung paano nila uh, titingnan yung mga yun. In reality, sir, have we completed phase 2 decommissioning? All 12,000 na ba yun? Uh, for the de decommissioning, yes. Uh, all the 12,000 has been decommissioned. Uh, last, uh, the last batch was on March of 2020. Uh, but uh, I shall uh, emphasize that there are still other deliverables, other agreements and the different aspects or components of the program uh. that still needs to be, that still need to be completed. Okay, uh, uh, as na lang po, klaro lang po that uh, while phase two in terms of decommissioning, tapos na, may kulang lang the deliverables, we actually have yet to start on phase three decommissioning, right? Yes po, ma'am. Okay, thank you, thank you. So the question is from Ms. Julie. Uh, may we ask how you would imagine the transformed MILF camps? What would these look like? How will these be run? And what role will the women play in these camps? Uh, actually, we didn't able to get a copy of the plans. Uh, we requested for sample copies of the camp transformation plan, pero hindi kami uh, nabigyan. Uh, though, uh, in the process of the camp formulation, we were informed that uh, different stakeholders uh, were involved uh, besides the uh, decommission combatants uh, their families uh, were also involved the uh, LGUs and other stakeholders uh, within and the vicinity of the uh, 
uh, camp uh, were consulted uh, and participated during the process of planning. Uh, ayun, hindi uh, pa namin masyadong nabivisualize though uh, we uh, presume that uh, it is a comprehensive uh, plan uh, looking into different uh, aspects of the, the area development, uh, the economic component, uh, the, uh, the socio-cultural uh, and the political aspects has been included in the design and uh, different stake stakeholders uh, were involved, including, of course, uh, uh, women. Okay, thank you for that. We have another question from Ms. Carmen of the Nonviolent Task Force. Is there a coordination between the NTF PAG and NTF PCVE? And, uh, and is the BARM involved in both of the task forces? What are the coordination measures between these task forces with the BARM? Uh, coordination between the NTF and... Uh, ano yung isang sunod, ma'am? Ah, sir? Uh, NTF PVE and NTF PAG. A NTF... Uh, generally, the normalization uh mechanisms or structures uh, has its own setup from the panels uh, then to the different task forces reporting to the panel and we have the joint normalization committees the committee uh, that is also directly reporting to the panels but uh, is coordinating all the different uh, mechanisms under the normalization program uh, ito yung structure na to mechanisms that are primarily primal, primarily responsible in the implementation of the program. It has only uh, coordinations uh, with the level of the BARM. No? So, walang, uh, uh, baga, the BARM is not directly part of the mechanism uh, structure of the normalization program. Okay, so there's a follow-up question from Ms. Carmen. Uh, do you have the recommendation for an appropriate platform or mechanism for CSO participation? Uh, yes, uh, that's one of our recommendation. Uh, in fact, we uh, specifically suggested to if, uh, to, if possible, to mirror the executive order number 79. Huh? Uh, issued by the president at the national level uh, that paved the way for the creation of intercabinet cluster for mechanism for normalization. So, uh, meron lang earlier suggestion actually to uh, create a similar type of mechanism at the barn, uh, maybe in the form of interministerial uh, mechanism also. But uh, uh, we also recommended for a platform to be established through uh, a, a, a law uh, under the BARM parliament or uh, an executive order from the chief minister to create uh, that mechanism for uh, participation of uh, civil society organizations and uh, other stakeholders uh, in the BARM. Okay, thank you for that. There's a comment though, before we go to the next question, there's a comment from Ms. Sophia. Um, I think di naman sa, quote, not active ang CSOs sa normalization, but mukhang di open ang OPAP for, para sa participation ng CSOs. Uh, maybe a comment from you, sir? Uh, just want to qual qualify no, that uh, ang sinab sinabi, lang, sinabi namin kanina that it is not as active as before, before the signing of the Bangsamoro uh, Organic Law. Uh, there are some NGOs that are still on board and active with the normalization, but uh, many of those that were active before ay hindi na masyadong active na yun. Kaya ang term nam is diminishing uh, participation. Uh, well, when we interviewed OPAP, yun din ang observation nila na uh, uh, hindi na nga ka-active. Uh, though 
uh, kailangan din strengthen yung mechanism for that uh, aspect para ma-revive ulit yung uh, activeness ng participation ng civil society organization. Okay. Yes. Um, sir, there's another question. There's a question po from Carmela von Buena of uh, The Guardian in UK and she also writes for Rappler. What can happen if OPAP is unable to get enough funding for normalization deliverables in the 2021 budget? And uh, I will segue to my question, which is similar to hers. You mentioned 23.1 billion uh, deficit. No, uh, well, 10.5 billion deficit for the for the 12,000 combatants, the commission. Yes, and uh, there is no budget as yet for the next 35 percent. And you said that's 12.6, so 23 billion something. Sa aspect lang po yan ng socioeconomic. Uh, Carmela's question is overall. Salamat po. Uh, yes, for the budget, uh, the OPAP uh, requested a budget, but the allocated, actual budget allocated for 2020 was only 412 uh, million. And then I said, for 2021, wala pong, there's no budget allocated for the socio-economic aspect. What was included for the 2021 budget was the uh, allocation for the 100,000 cash assist assistance for each of the decommissioned combatants that will be equivalent to 1.4 billion or for 14,000 decommissioned combatants. Uh, that's for the cash assistance plus another 200 million for the administrative costs. So again, uh, just like as the 12,000 uh, decommissioned combatants, you have a deficit of 10.5 uh, billion for the 14,000 decommissioned combatants, there is also a deficit uh, of uh, around 12 billion uh, pesos. So that's the uh, the gap there. Uh, there's no clear budget for the socio-economic packages apart from the 100,000 cash assistance for the plan to be decommissioned combatants uh, for that 14,000 uh, members of the MALFBF. Okay, uh, speaking of decommissioning, uh, there's also a question in uh, regarding uh, the BWAB. Um, how many how many BWAB in total have been decommissioned already and were you able to get their perspective during the review? Uh, yes, we were able to uh, uh, interview with the brigade commander of the BWAB. Uh, they have uh, been part of the decommissioned combatants. Uh, I just forgot the number, but we have that number. <laughs> just forgot it. Uh, their concern is uh, mainly on the delivery of the remaining socioeconomic packages. Uh, just like with the other decommissioned combatants, they have very much high expectations uh, that it will be delivered soon. And uh, they also highlighted the support for housing. Uh, sabi nga nila that uh, if possible, yung housing nila ay doon sana itatayo sa kung saan ang mga kabahayan nila. And it should uh, be near to their means of livelihood. Uh, yun po, sir. Uh, they are part of uh, the whole uh, uh, initiative and uh, been uh, uh, consulted and they are uh, very active in their participation to the normalization program. Okay. Um, on the last recommendation, uh, mm -hmm. that is the role of the OPAP. Um, 
but for the chief minister, uh, what agency is in charge? I think uh, the question is about the recommendation. Uh, the last recommendation is uh, on uh, the to, to, to provide the principles, no? uh, President Duterte and Chief Minister uh, Murad, uh, on the objective situation. Well, uh, of course, this is uh, mainly through the panels uh, because uh, uh, it involves the principles of the both uh, parties. Well, OPAP can uh, help uh, uh, also provide information and provide uh, uh, follow-ups on whatever recommendations uh, that will be arrived by both panels. But uh, for me, uh, it is for the panels uh, themselves, the chief of the panels, to really uh, reach out to their uh, principals uh, so that uh, the recommendations can be forwarded to them and uh, they could be given objective assessment of the situation. Uh, sir, for a question from Ms. Pat Sarenas of the Mindanao Coalition of Development NGOs. How does the non-completion or slow facing of the decommissioning and the existence still of many private armed groups intersect with the increasing recruitment in groups espousing violent extremism? Uh, marami talaga mga katanungan dito, no? Kasi uh, yung pag ay dependent doon sa pag uh, tatayo ng task force uh, hanggang ngayon ay uh, supposed to be tatayo yun uh, last month pero hindi hindi ko alam hindi namin alam kung naitatayo na ito uh, yung task force kasi yung primarily uh, uh, responsible para doon sa actual dismantling now uh, may mga kadikit na usapin ito dahil uh, as per doon sa annex on normalization, uh, kasama rito yung sa dismantling ay yung mga JPSDs. Uh, kasi pag redeploy mo yung uh, EAP, uh, yung JPSD yung uh, papalit sa mga areas. JPSD of course is composed of IMILF, VIAP and the PNP. Uh, EAP. Pero so far sa ngayon ay anim na teams pa lang yung nandyan uh, na deploy. Uh, meron pang maraming i-deploy at uh, dapat i-train. Pero even without a GPST, uh, yung AFP pa rin ang nandun uh, at saka yung AN, uh, PNP. Uh, pero bago nga mangyari yung actual dismantling ng mga PAGs ay uh, itong task force muna ang uh, dapat ma-organize kasi sila yung mag-implement ng uh, actual dismantling ng mga PAGs. Yun po. Okay, there's a question from Ms. Sophia uh, regarding the implementation timeline. Uh, what's the implementation timeline for the socio-economic package of the first and second batch? And when is the third batch for decommissioning? It's supposed to be used to socio-economic packages ay uh, kasama doon sa iba't ibang phases. In fact, uh, pagbigay mo ng 100,000 cash assistance, uh, the other packages that uh, will be in the form of housing, uh, livelihood, infrastructures, uh, scholarships, uh, health, health uh, services ay isusunod na sana kaagad yun. Uh, so, yun nga, uh, unfortunately, because of uh, the lack of budget at uh, inabot pa nitong pandemic, ay hindi pa na i-deliver yung uh, mga economic packages. Uh, for the 12,145 already decommissioned combatants, at uh, wala rin malino pa na budget for the next uh, 14,000 no? uh, uh, to be decommissioned. Uh, that would constitute the 35% for the third phase. So, yun yung mga gaps na kailangan, kailangan ayusin dahil nga, uh, of course, that will be dependent on the available budget kasi pa, hindi maibibigay yung mga packages na ipagulang 
walang walang pondo. So, yun po ang mga kailangang uh, ayusin ng uh, both panels. Okay, there's a follow-up uh, from Ms. Carmela. Uh, what happens to the timeline if the budget gaps are not filled? Uh, will it mean you have to extend the timeline? And what are the dangers? Um, the, y yung timeline, uh, merong commitment. Uh, the panels have commitment to sign the exit agreement uh, in time of the end of the transition period on June 2022. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have still a lot of deliverables, even extending from phase one. So, meron pang hindi na deliver sa phase one, marami sa phase two. At uh, yan yung kailangan pag-usapan ng panel on how they will proceed to the next phase when there's still a lot of uh, unfulfilled. No, unaccomplished uh, agreements in phase one and phase two. So, kailangan nilang pag-usapan yun kung uh, kaya ba nilang habulin yung targeted na uh, exit agreement by the end of 2022. If not, uh, they would also be uh, compelled to agree to extend the signing of the exit agreement. Uh, given the circumstances and realities, of course, uh, there are dangers, no? risks, because you have uh, other groups, uh, violent groups, uh, to mga extremist groups, you have also the kidnap or ransom, you have the illegal drugs, uh, trades, proliferation of drugs, etc. That could uh, somehow uh, uh, manipulate if there is uh, this level of uh, frustrations from among the decommissioned combatants or uh, other members of the, the MILF and the BF uh, in the event that the socio-economic packages uh, will be delayed uh, so much. So, kailangan uh, balansin na mabuti yun na sana ay hindi naman tatagal ng gusto yung pagbibigay ng mga uh, agreed na mga packages kasi nga napakataas ng ekspektasyon ng mga uh, decommissioned combatants sa kanilang mga pamilya at sa kanilang mga community na ma-deliver yun kagad. Yun po. Okay, there's also a question regarding the joint peace and security teams uh, from Ms. Sophia. Um, what is the next, uh, when is the next batch of JPST training? Because currently there were only four plus JPST members being trained out of the targeted 6,000 members of JPST from PNP, AFP, and BIAF. Uh, there are trainings. Uh, in fact, last September, Last September, they uh, they had conducted the uh, trainings of the JPST. Though uh, they have to uh, double time or triple time uh, to train uh, the MILFB up for the JPST. I say uh, you have, they have targeted three thousand for MILF and BF to be trained. Eh, sa ngayon, you only have 225 trained and deployed 90. So, ang balansi pa is 2,775 uh, to be trained. So, napakalaki pa ng gap. Uh, problema nito ay meron kang pandemic and yung, again, the, the issue of uh, the budget. While you have the uh, government of Japan supporting the, the establishment of the uh, stations no? uh, in the construction of the, 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 of the stations, but the training and uh, provision of subsistence allowance and other needs for the uh, GPSTs uh, still to be shouldered by the uh, government, but uh, the government is having problem with the budget. Uh, not not only for the JPST, but for the whole the whole program. 
Okay, a question from Mr. Ryan Rosauro. Uh, in the political track review, uh, the MPC recommended a three-year extension of the transition period. Will this have bearing on the normalization process or will the challenges faced by the normalization process cured with an extension, uh, be cured uh, with an extension of the transition period? Uh, of course, these two tracks are uh, uh, having its own course, but uh, as we earlier said, uh, these are uh, interlocked. No? Uh, in fact, the the establishment of the BARM is part of the uh, program itself. The signing and uh, the the creation of the new government new political entity is part of the great agreement to be uh, complied and yan nga na, na comply na yan though uh, even if uh, the farm uh, will be extended and the normalization program can catch up well it could also uh, sign its agreement by 2022 but uh, if the panels would decide that uh, there are still a lot of uh, agreements uh, that are still to be complied, to be fulfilled, uh, the, especially on the issue of the uh, establishment and operationalization of the Bangsamoro police, uh, yan yung pinaka parameters, and the problem of uh, uh, the budget, the budget uh, they could also decide on to extend the normalization program beyond 2022 if uh, that is not really uh, realizable by that time. Um, we have a question from uh, from Ms. Julie. Uh, generally, given the realities, uh, where is BARM now moving forward? Uh, because election is in the corner. The question of BARM should uh, have uh, or should be answered by uh, the previous uh, presentation on the political and uh, legal track, uh, I don't know if that was already uh, answered. But uh, anybody from the political legal uh, track team uh, to answer the question? Um, uh, Marianne or Lot? Well, just my just my opinion on on the matter. Uh, uh, there is still a lot also of, uh, uh, task uh, to be completed uh, with the barn, no? so that uh, it, it could uh, substantially uh, deliver the the task assigned to them uh, within the transition period. But this is precisely the reason why the team recommended for an extension because uh, the time is so short for the three years to complete all the uh, identified uh, tasks for the transition, transition, transition period. And then you have this problem on pandemic. Uh, that, that is why the team recommended for an extension of uh, the transition period to 20. 25 uh, for another three years. Well, anybody from the team could add more on my answer. Yung extension kasi in 2019, ano yan siya eh, wasted uh, year yan eh. Dahil sa in 2019, uh, BARM was just implementing the ARMM projects. Kasi Yung budget allocated for 2019 ay sagaa 2019 yan, no? prepared in 2018. So there were no projects talaga in 2019 na, na, na following the BOL. So yung mga set priorities na na-identify sa BOL, hindi yan na-implement in 2019. Uh, ang pandemic is just ano eh parang nag uh, re, nag anong tawag niyan nagpasamot sa situation uh, in 2020 meron tayong pandemic so talagang very slow yung implementation 
noong mga set priorities na na-identify sa BOL. So, tapos, uh, when we presented nga our recommendations to the BTA sometime in September, meron apat na parliament members na nagpas ng ano nagsubmit nagpas nag, no nagsubmit ng resolution uh, for the extension uh, na realize din nila na talagang by 2022 halos walang uh, very anong tawag dito yung mga set priorities ay talagang hindi nila ma-accomplish lahat so to give them ano for the BTA to give them sufficient time to fully accomplish uh, their priority tasks and duties, uh, kailangan talagang uh, magkaroon ng extension. Uh, yun. Uh, lalo na yung sa normalization process and the larger context ng, ano, ng CAB, ng Comprehensive Agreement on the Bagsang Moro, na ma-implement talaga siya. So, Uh, originally naman ang ang uh, originally MILF was batting for six years eh. pero during the negotiation uh, pumayag sila na ano reduce to three years but then uh, based on the reality now talagang hirap na ma-implement yung mga set priorities according to the BOL So that's the reason for uh, our recommendation for the extension ng period of transition for another three years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mamelo. Thank you for all our presenters. Thank you very much. Uh, we expect to uh, you to be with us as we move uh, into the new year in 2021 and even beyond. Thank you.